times a day do we look at ourselves? How many times in the course of a day do we check our appearance? Certainly first thing in the morning, and last thing at night. And how many times on seeing the mirror can we possibly resist it? Like Sam. Play it again, Sam. Who so wants to be someone else. How can you chat up a girl with your cheeks sucked in to give you bone structure? Or standing on your toes to give you height? And how do you eat pretzels with a dangerous half-smile playing around the lips? Clothes help us to look at ourselves and see someone different. what we are, or what we'd like to be. If clothes make the man, why not any man? Why not a new, improved man? Alas, Sam, on them it always looks right. And on them, and those, and these, and her, and most certainly him. For most of us, clothes express a need. For Sam, they are expressions of a longed-for self-image. When you can afford it. When you look into the mirror on the wall, there's a disappointing soul, bring it down low, make you want to go and change yourself for somebody new. Well, could you spell? Are you what you want or what you would like to see? For the rest of us, the needs are different. But they exist beyond practicality, beyond suitability, even beyond fashion. When we get tired of what we see, when we want to change the picture, we change the clothes. And that's fashion. And that's Timothy. And Timothy is one of life's compulsive, slavish, dedicated followers of fashion. He wouldn't dress for the film. He was afraid that by the time he released it, he'd look dated. It started in 1958. I suppose it was a way of shifting attention away from his acne. Anyway, his first look was Surly Rebel, then Teenage Idol. Well, that was a nuisance, that one. Every time he sat down, I had to pick bits of gold lamy thread off the sofa. Cut on everything, that did. Worse than the Airedale. Then it's been one thing after another. The only time he cut down was when he was a scruffy militant, just as well as he's always painting graffiti on fired up walls. Poor Timothy. So desperate to be in. So desperate to keep up. There's a danger that he might chase in ever increasing circles, finally to disappear up his own inside leg measurement. Without being as slavish as Timothy, most men today, of all ages and class, are genuinely more interested in their clothes, increasingly committed to style. More open to impulse, of course, to seduction, to persuasion, temptation, and confusion.
Style, like most things, needs judgment. It's not a question of doing it, but of doing it right. Not a question of how we buy, or even what we buy, but of doing it right. There are, of course, many among us who don't want to change the picture. There are many among us who don't want to keep up with fashion. Some of us feel it's not worth it. And providing we hang on to our old clothes, the picture will only come round again. And there are some of us who aren't even aware there's a picture to be seen. And this is Ted. And this is Ted's wardrobe. The word has no deeper sartorial implications. A wardrobe to Ted is simply a wooden box for hanging out clothes. Sometimes. Ted can make an expensive suit look like something from a jumble sale. And when Ted looks at himself, it is no more than a mechanical check. Buttons buttoned, braces braced, zipper zipped, and a quick recount, breast pocket, all ball points present to correct sock. Ted wears clothes because if he didn't, he would have nowhere to keep his ballpoint collection, nowhere to keep his mentholated tissues, or his tartan penknife, or his extendable steel tape measure, or his tin of throat lozenges, or his tube of model airplane glue, or his runners-up medal for the military two-step finals. Somewhere between Timothy's dedication and Sam's daydream, and Ted's indifference. The rest of us have attitudes and motives as complex and as varied as items displayed in this store. Well. Don't you trip, 